So for this first one, you have to find this missing side. You can call it A or B, you can call it X. Really, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna just call it X. It would be X squared plus four squared equals six squared. This would be 16, this would be 36. I'm doing this kind of quick because you guys did it already. Uh, subtract that over, you should get 20. And then what two numbers are gonna multiply for 20? Yeah, bless you, four times five. And your square root of four is two, so two square root of five. Did we make it there? I heard some people saying two square root of five, so I think that was all right. All right, so this is your point of view because this is the one that's labeled. That's your theta, that little Easter egg thing. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be four over six. That's going to reduce to two thirds. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's two square root of five over six. Two sixth will reduce to one third. I didn't write the one. You can if you want to. It's up to you. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's four over two square root of five. Now, a couple of things are gonna happen there. First of all, four over two reduces to two over one. You can put the one if you want. And then that's the one you have to rationalize because you can't have the square root on the bottom. So if you multiply by square root of five, that's gonna give you two square root of five over five. All right, now for two and three, I'll do one or the other because they're both pretty similar and it's exactly the same as what you did on your quiz. Let me get my calculator here. Uh, which one do you want to do? Do you want to do two or three? Because there's no angles? That's a good idea. See, you're like making good choices, all right? So I would get little a first on this one. And of course, I'm going to fill all this in when we're done. I'll do all the problems and post it, all right? You don't have a delta math assignment before a test. So probably like go back and do whichever ones we skipped and then check your answers. All right, so this would be a squared plus eight squared is 64 equals six. Is that 256? 16 yeah. squared, okay, 256. Yeah. And then you would subtract the 64, I'm just using my calculator, 192. Now the only one that needs to have the square roots and all that in it is this first one. So this one, you can just type square root 192 in and get the decimal. Um, I got 13.856. I just typed square root 192. Thank you for double checking me. That's fine too. But this is less work. All right. And then we're going to find the angles A and B. So for A, A would be your point of view. Obviously, that's the one you're finding. Eight would be adjacent. 16 is hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse, would that be sine, cosine, or tangent? Cosine, good. So cosine of A equals eight over 16. And then how do you type that if you want the angle? Perfect, which is inverse. Second cosine. 8 over 16 is 1 half. You can type 8 over 16. I just reduced it. Um, and I got 60. Now, this one we could probably do in our head. If that's 60, then what's B? 30. Okay. But humor me for a second. Because say that came out to some crazy decimal. Store at perfect. Okay. Store alpha A, enter. And then you would subtract them all from 180. Okay, we just did that in our head because it's a 30, 60, 90. But if it came out to something weird, you would store it and then subtract from 180. All right, down here are these area formulas. They're on the board behind me. Again, I'm going to take a picture of that and post it to Schoology. For this one, you have all lowercase letters. So we're going to do that one that has the S value. So it's 1 half 7 plus 9.3 plus 11. You would type that in and get that S value. And then we'll do the big square root thing to get the area. Bless you. Yeah, this test is a lot of button pushing, which I will not conceal from you. I don't love. Because you can know exactly what you're doing and get wrong answers if you hit one wrong button. So that does frustrate me. I don't like taking off points when my students know what they're doing. All right, did anyone else get what I got? 13.65, okay. 
So you're going to draw a gigantic square root. And underneath of there, you're going to put 13.65. And then usually I'll just draw three blank parentheses. In the first one, we're going to put 13.65 uh, minus 7. I got uh, 6.65. You can write 13. If anyone wrote 13.65 minus 7, totally valid. I just didn't feel like writing it. I typed it in the calculator. All right. And then we're going to do 13.65 minus uh, 9.3, just 4.35. And then we're going to do 13.65 minus 11, which is 2.65. And then you're going to type that whole thing, and then that's your answer. So the area things are just formulas you memorize and plug the numbers in. Oh, did you do it already? You're fast. Oops. Some of you did that so quick, you were ahead of me. Is this what you got? Yeah. All right, 32.347. Be patient while everyone who's still typing it gets a chance to do it. Typing it is a skill you need. The, the calculator is a skill you need for this test. Good job. All right, now I always bring up units. I've always done this verbally. This time we're gonna actually write it. Do you see how these are all feet? So feet squared or square feet because it's an area. All right, and then this one, you have an angle. It's one half BC sine of A. So one half times 13 times 28 sine of 53. I like that one a little better and shorter. Wait, so that one because it has an angle with it, yeah. You can't do sine, cosine, tangent unless you have an angle because it's always the trig function of the angle. Um, so go ahead and type that one in. Thank you for like being good humored about all the button pushing. No one complains about it, which is nice. I'm the one that complains about it. Oh, I got 145 points. Okay, cool. That just seemed kind of large, but I guess one of the sides is 28. So <laughs> um, error is never the right answer. So again, is feet squared. I can come look at your calculator. All right, go ahead and flip over. We'll do all of this page because these are word problems and that can tend to throw people off. So we're going to draw a picture and solve for the missing stuff. All right, we're designing a new building. We're making a wheelchair ramp. It's going to be a right triangle. They're all going to be right triangle. Well, I'd say that number eight won't be a right triangle because that one's a little bit different. All right, right triangle. So this is uh, like the base of it, and you're going up a hill to get to the door. So like the door to get in the building, you guys have seen a ramp before, use your imagination, okay? This is where you can go in and the door is up here. All right, uh, determine the length of the ramp. So which piece are we looking for? What's like the, good, that's the length of the ramp, good. Ramp makes an angle of 5.5 degrees. If you're like, hey, that's rather small, yeah. Um, I mean, what do you want your wheelchair ramp to be like? All right. Um, the base of the doorway is three feet above the ground. That's why there's a ramp. You go know, up those three feet. So is this sine, cosine, or tangent? Uh, uh, sine. Sine. Because this is your point. Hold on. This is your point of view. That means three is the opposite across from that. X is hypotenuse. So it's going to be sine. 5.5 degrees equals three over X. And go ahead and type that. And I'll, I'll make sure we can get the same thing. Wait, yes, that's good. That's what I don't have Wait, is it three divided? It's three divided by a sine of 5.5. When your variable's in the denominator, you have to divide. Mathematically, here's what's happening. If you want me to explain it to you. You multiply the X over. So you'd have X times sine of blah, blah, blah. And then you divide the sine of whatever over. So anyway, it's three divided by sine of stuff. I got 31.300. Perfect. Um, and was it feet, meters, yards? What was this, feet? <laughs> yeah, don't come up to me and be like, something's wrong with my calculator, because that's not, good job, you got it. 
All right. From a 125 foot observation tower near the coastline. So like a lighthouse, use your imagination. All right. An observer sights a boat. So here's your right triangle. As a heads up, there's going to be two triangles in this one. <laughs> so this is the tower. It's 125 feet tall. This is the boat out here in the water. The boat is in the water. Hold on to that. Okay. The angle of depression to the boat is 16 degrees. I know it says angle of depression, but in theory, the sky and the ground are parallel. So alternate interior, it's going to go down there. Now it says the angle of depression to the coast is 41 degrees. This would be, I'm going to attempt to draw this. This would be the water. This point right here is where the water meets the sand. You get what I'm saying? That's what a coast is. Like water, yeah. sand, you've been to the beach. Okay. So to that point is 41 degrees. So we got two triangles. Do you remember the one we did about the statue on top of the building? Yeah. Goddess of wheat. It's exactly like that. All right. You've two triangles. How far is the boat offshore? So this little water that I tried to draw there, it looks like a cloud. That's the distance we're trying to find, but you can't jump straight to that, all right? Let's do the 16 degrees. 125 is opposite. Since the 16 is all the way out there to the boat, this is what I'm gonna call A. And the reason I'm gonna call it A is we're gonna end up having to store that. You can technically call it any letter of the alphabet you want, but go with A and B, all right? So it would be sine, cosine, or tangent. We're doing 16. Tangent, because we don't have the hypotenuse. So it's going to be tangent 16 equals 125 over A. It's the whole distance, because the boat is all the way out there. So go ahead and type that and store it as A. Store alpha A, enter. It should be a kind of big number because the boat is all the way out there. I got 435. Wait, what you 125 divided by a tangent of 16. Enter. Store alpha A. Enter. Yeah. Let me see. So now that it's stored, I'm going to hit clear. You can clear that out once you store it. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the smaller triangle. I'm going to call this distance B. And it gets set up literally the exact same way. Just do it again. It'll be tangent, uh, what is that one? 41 is 125 over B. So literally just do the exact same thing twice is all that it is. So we're going to type uh, 125 divided by tangent 41. Store alpha B enter. Just give everybody a chance to look. You got to be patient with the button pushing. So just take a deep breath. If you're super quick with it, just take a deep breath and wait for everybody, okay? Did anyone else get... 143 points up. Okay, perfect. So once you store it, you can clear that out. Now you either add or subtract. You want this distance. So what do you think? We're perfect. A minus B, and you're just going to type it in alpha A minus alpha B, and that's the final answer. Feet. I can't help you with the calculator on the test. That's why it's important to practice the button pushing. Uh, but if we ask for the test and like ask if we just push it wrong on the calculator, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I can do is reset it again for you. All right, we'll do this one, then we'll do our halfway through break. All right, uh, you are standing 40 meters from the base of a tree that is leaning eight degrees from vertical towards you. I get that trees are vertical, but are they all perfectly vertical? No, like, you know, wind and stuff, okay? So here's you, I'm gonna attempt to draw this. You are standing 40 meters, so this is the 40, from the tree, but the tree is leaning towards you a little bit. This is the tree. I can't draw a tree. I was thinking about it, but I thought better of it. So the, do you get that the tree is leaning towards you? Yeah. 
Now look, it says eight degrees off of vertical. So you have to do 90 minus eight. Do you get what I'm saying? 90 would be perfectly vertical, but it's not perfectly vertical. It's leaning a little bit. So what's 90 minus eight? 82 degrees. Hey, she answered me. So that's, do you get how I got 82? 90 would be perfectly vertical, but it's eight degrees off. All right. And then you can finish up your triangle. Angle of elevation from your feet to the top of the tree is 20 degrees. Find the height of the tree. So that th this was the tree. You have to use your imagination because I can't draw a tree, but the thing leaning towards you is the tree. Now you, X is the, yeah, here I'll try and draw a tree. This is the tree, but it's like leaning a little bit. That's good. Okay, thanks. Looks like a lollipop, but it's fine. So that's the tree. It's leaning towards you a little bit. Um, you can't do Sokotoa because it's not a right triangle. Instead, what pattern did we get? We got angle, side, angle. Do you see how the side is in between? Angle, side, angle. Now look right here. Angle, side. Good. That means law of sides. You need a side across from an angle. Well, the only side you have is 40. You don't have the angle across from that. Or do you? Oh. Yeah, do 180 minus the others, and that'll give you that one. That's the one thing you don't have to show any work for in the test, is 180 minus whatever, because I'll just know you type that in the calculator. All right, what do we get for that? All right, 78. So you're going to set it up 40 over sine 78 equals, well, there will be a sine of 20, but x over sine 20, and then you'll type it in and get your answer. So how would you, or do you need to hit second? Let me start with that. No. No, because no, you don't need an angle. Good, okay. Perfect. You're gonna do 40 sine 20, close parenthesis, divided by, you guys are gonna rock this test, awesome. Divided by sine 78. So it's 13.986 meters. Yeah, good. All right, yeah, go ahead and flip over. And just as a heads up, what we'll do for the rest of these, we'll draw all of them and state the patterns, and then I'll do like one of each of the different kind of patterns, okay? Just draw a triangle, it's not gonna be to scale. And where should you start labeling? That bottom left-hand corner, all right. And it doesn't matter if it's A, B, or C, the letter doesn't matter, it's the first angle. Perfect. A, 36. You guys with me over here? All right. Across from that is baby A. Perfect, which is eight. Now, I don't have another angle to put down here, but I'm perfect. All right. I need to make that B. Across from that is five. The one I don't know anything about. Go C goes at the top. So what pattern is that? Side, side. Cool. Good. Side, side, angle. So that's the one that we'll start out. Theta is obtuse or acute, and then you go from there. Okay. But we're just going to go draw them all first. Because I'm not going to necessarily do every single one of these. I'm not trying to torture you here. All right. So this one, A, 100 degrees. It's not to scale. 100 would be, you know, like this, like bigger than 90, but just, you know, good enough. Across from that is 21. We have another angle, which is C. So I'm gonna put C here, that's 16. Baby C goes across from that. Angle B goes at the top. We don't know anything about that one. So then look at it, what pattern? So we only have one side. So angle, angle, side. If you wrote side, angle, angle, that's fine too. It really doesn't matter. But the side is not in between them. If you wrote angle, side, angle, I'd have to take off for that because the side is not in between them. So what would you do for that one? Awesome. Just do the problem. That's one of the easy ones. Just do law of signs. It'll work out. You'll get everything. All right, so that's an easier one. All right, this one. You can tell what the pattern is already. But I'm going to give you a point for drawing it and stating the pattern. So just do it. Um, what is this pattern? Yeah. So it does not matter where you put anything, really, uh, because you don't have any of the angles. But you have to find those smallest to biggest, or it's not going to work out. Okay. 
You don't really need a picture for that one, but I'm going to give you a point for doing it. So you, you get a point for this, just drawing it and stating the pattern. All right, number 12. A is going to go in the bottom left, 110. Again, it's not to scale. Across from that is 125. And then what angle will I put down here? I know that I don't have another angle, but B, because side B is 100. And then the one you don't know anything about goes at the top. Good. So that's the analysis. You'll start out theta is whatever. This is what I want you to do on the test too, by the way. Go through and just draw them all and state all the patterns. And then I would do them easiest to hardest. I would do the easiest ones first and work my way up to the harder ones. Okay. So here, angle A goes in the bottom left, 110. Again, it's not to scale. Across from that is 125. Again, angle B is gonna go here across from that 200. We don't know anything about C. And so what's your pattern? Oh, yeah. So again, that's the analysis. You'll go theta is whatever and go from there. Tim is cool, do I have to write theta is whatever? Yes, like that's the analysis. That's what I'm giving you points for. Even if you don't do the problem, like it comes out no solution, you still get points for writing all that. All right, what goes in the bottom left for this one? Yeah, 108C. So it's not always A, it's just whichever one you have. All right, we don't have baby C. And then it kind of doesn't matter where you put these ones. It's not going to make a difference because you don't have either of the angles. I'm going to put A down here across from that is 10. B up here across from that is 7. Oh, I hear you saying it already. What's the pattern? Yeah, SAS. <laughs> side, angle, side. So what does that mean? Law of, law of cosine but that one's easier than side 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 so when we're like hey which ones are we going to do i'll probably skip that one and do the side 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 one instead because that's the harder one this one's the easier one all right 15 what's going to go in the bottom left a good 58 it's not always a though it's just whichever one you have all right across from that is 11.4 B goes here, across from that is 12.8. You don't know anything about C. And that one is side side angle. I think I made this one side side angle too. I put more of them on the study guide because it's the hardest one. So I wanted to give you more practice. Yeah, this one is as well, because A is 76. What goes across from that? Yeah, 18, B is 20, C you don't know anything about. So side side angle. So I think I'm gonna skip 14 because I'll do the side 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 one instead. I think I'm gonna skip that one. And then I think, go back. I'm gonna skip 10 because that's an easier one. You just do law of signs and get the answer. And again, I'll do all the rest of these and you know post a picture of it. But I think I'm going to skip those two. We'll do the others. You can do six of these, right? Can you handle that? All right. So this one is side side angle. We're going to write theta is. So theta is what? Acute. Good. Cute. Opposite is eight. So the opposite is. Good, so you're gonna just do the problem. So actually maybe I might set this up and then let you guys finish it. Cause you're gonna just do the problem, like just do the problem. It means you're good. So you're gonna find first angle B, cause it's across from the one you have and then angle C and then baby C. I think I'll leave that one for you guys. That's not done yet, but you would just do the problem, right? Like just do the problem. I'm going to leave this one for you guys because, again, just do the problem. Like, just do law of signs. You'll be fine. All right, this one's going to be tougher. You have to do these smallest to biggest. So which one are we going to find first? 
A, good. And then C and then B. We're going to work this one the whole way through because this one's tougher. I'm trying to do the harder ones for you and leave the easier ones. All right, so what is A? Six. It's going to be six squared equals. You guys shouted this formula out to me, so I think you've got it. It would be six squared equals. 12, 12 squared. Good. Perfect. Minus. A good cosine A. Perfect. And you're going to use your calculator, but you do have to do a little bit of writing. It's like three more steps, all right? Six squared is 36. This is 144, and then this is 64. Bless you. So 144 plus 64, I got 208. It just use your calculator, like just type in the calculator. Minus. Uh, two times twelve times eight. I'm just I'm just button pushing that in. I got uh, one ninety two cosine a, and then this is the step that gets messed up the most often because people subtract those. You have to subtract two o eight to the other side. But Miss Cole, it'll come out negative. Yeah, that's perfect. That's good because you'll have a negative on both sides and they'll cancel out. Could you guys remember things that I say to you? It's awesome. All right, I got negative one seventy two. I'm not hearing any complaining, so I'm going to assume I was all right. <laughs> did, did anyone type it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you would divide over the 192. That reduces, but I don't care at that point. Like, we're going to just type it in. And how would you type that? This is what's going to give us, like, our final answer for A. Second, second cosine, cosine inverse. Second cosine, uh, what is it, 172 over 192. If you didn't type anything yet, at least type this because you're going to have to store that to move on to the next step. So store alpha A, enter. All right, and then you can clear it out once you got it stored. Again, if I don't, you have to be vocal if you have a problem. I didn't hear any complaining, so I'm going to assume we're okay. Now you have a side across from an angle. You have A. So you're going to do your law of sines. You want to do law of sines instead of law of cosines because this is a lot, right? You want to do the shorter way. So it'll be 6 over sine of what we just found equals, and then you have to put the next one you're looking for, which is C. Go back to your list. So it's going to be 8 over sine C. Yes, you're so good on that calculator. All right, second sine, because you're looking for the angle. And then you're going to do 8 sine of alpha A, like use your stored one, close the parentheses, and then what? Divide by, good, oh my God, perfect, you guys have got it. I always worry so much about the button pushing with this because it, it's a lot. Like, it's a lot. Did anyone else get that? <laughs> okay, so 36 point, what is it, 336. Store that as C, store alpha C, enter. And then how do you get the last one? And this doesn't require any work. Yeah, 180 minus alpha A and alpha C. That'll give you the last one. That's the only thing you don't have to show work for on the test. If you're just subtracting from 180, you can just type that in the calculator. And here's a way you can kind of check your work. We found them smallest to biggest. So do these numbers go smallest to biggest? Yes. Okay, so you can check your work that way. Like if they're out of order, you can be like, oh, whoops. All right. Now we already set them all up. How is 12 going to start since it's side side angle? Analysis. Theta is good. And then you compare these. The opposite, 125. Good. What does that mean? If it's bigger, just do the problem. So I'm going to write the order of these, and then I'm going to leave that one for you. Just answer the question. Like, just do the problem. All right? You would find B. Like, on this one? Well, 26 is smaller than 36 is smaller. 
Oh, so A is six. So that's the smallest one. Um, C is eight. That's the next smallest one. And then B is 12. That's the biggest one. If you do them out of order, the calculator will like, and we'll get to this later. There's actually two potential answers. The calculator is programmed to give you the smaller one. So if you do them out of order, it won't be right. Because I have B. It's based on what you have. I can't, like, let's have that conversation real quick. Why couldn't I find C first? Yeah, you don't have little C. If you try to do it out of order, you'll actually catch yourself because you're going to be like, hey, wait, I don't have that piece of information. But once you have B, you can subtract from 180 to get C. And then once you have that, you can get little C. You have to go with what you're given. If you don't have something, you know, then you're kind of, you're stuck. Here, do you want me to set up the first one? We'll set it up together. What do you have that's across from each other? Like, how would it get set up? Yeah, 125 over sine 110. And do you remember me saying, just go ahead and write it twice? Do that, because by the time you do the first one, you're going to forget what on earth were you were doing. And then what would go on the other side for the first one? You work with what you have. Yeah, 100 over sine B. Again, I'll finish that and I'll write the answers up. I won't have time to like play a game. So I'm going to leave that for you, but you would just type that in the calculator the exact same way we did this one. And then you would store it and then you'd be able to jump to the next one. Once you store that, then you can you know reuse it to get the next one. You'll be okay. I put more questions. I always try to make the study guide longer and more difficult than the test. So that when you get the test, you'll be like, hey, comparison to the study guide, this is easier, right? Mm -hmm. I always try to make this harder than the test. For hopefully obvious reasons, you'd hate to have a really easy study guide and then have the test be really hard, you know what I mean? All right, so side, side angle. It's the naughty word spelled backwards. So theta is obtuse, good. Oh, the, oh good. The opposite is smaller than the adjacent, which means no solution. no solution. But I think that worth at least three points. A point for the picture in the pattern, a point for writing this, and then a point for writing no solution. So you have to write this stuff because I'm awarding points for it. That's the analysis, all right? I'm leaving this one for you because we did side, side, side. It's going to be your law of cosines. I'll set up the first part for you, though. You're going to find baby C first. Why? Why is that the first thing? You're given the angle, all right? And then out of these two, you have to do smallest to biggest. So big B and then A. So it would get set up C squared equals, I'm just going to set it up and then we'll leave it there. But C squared equals 10 squared plus 7 squared minus 7 cosine 108. And the reason this is easier is because you don't have to do any more written work. How would you type that in the calculator? Like that, except, yeah, you have to square root that whole thing. And then once you store that, you can go to the next step. Again, I'll fill it out and post it. You don't have a Delta math assignment. So your homework is to do the ones I'm leaving for you and then check your answers, right? Side, side angle. So theta is what? Acute. Opposite is what? Oh, bummer. Womp, womp. Oh, you like these ones? Yeah. Oh, these are the harder ones. Well, no. If it's obtuse, you just stop. If it's acute, you have to drop down the height. It will always be sine. Thank you. Sine of 58. And you're trying to just look at this, I'll highlight it on here. You're trying to just look at this right triangle. So sine 58 equals H over 12.8. So go ahead and type that in and find your height. Okay. 
I was trying to finish by 10, so we'll have a half an hour for a game. I think we can do it, so we only have one more after this. Did anyone else get 10 point some yeah. stuff? Okay, 10.855. Uh, and then you compare again. It's going to go one of three ways, right? Your opposite, which is still 11.4, it didn't change, is what compared to the height? Bigger. So what does that mean? Two solutions. You're going to be okay. So immediately what you want to do is draw a line down here so you can find both of them. Again, is my pep talk. The second solution does not require any more written work. It is all within the calculator, which is both good and bad, all right? What order are we going to find these in? What do we find first? Work with what you have. B first, and then capital C, and then little c. You're going to be okay. I need a song for that. All right. So set up with what you have 11.4 over sine 58. And I would write it twice. I know we're like encroaching on the last problem, but kind of ran out of space. You know what? I'm not going to have room to do that. I'm going to have to move mine over a little bit. Just write it twice, though. If you're going to need it twice, write it twice. All right, and then what goes on the other side for the first one? Look at what you're trying to find. Yeah, and what you've got, you don't have any other numbers. 12.8 over sine B, and then you type it in. It, it's like, set it up, type it in. Set it up, type it in. I'm not going to say anything. I want to see if you can do this without me, because that's how it's going to be. Like, I've talked you through all the rest. It's time for me to remove the me talking at you part. Well, you can compare with each other. Well, me too. Did you get that? Nice job. Okay, well, you only need the first three decimal points. Yeah, good job. All right, 72.212, store it as B, and then you can clear out the calculator. Store alpha B, enter, and then you can clear and set that aside. We're going to do the next thing. Or actually, no, I still need that. <laughs> How do you get large C without, bless you, without doing any more work? Good. 180 minus what? What are the other ones? Yeah, 58. And B, it doesn't matter what order you do, do that in. Store that is, uh, what are we storing that as? C, and then you can clear it out. Once it's stored, you can set it aside. This is why I have you write that twice. Because after you do all that, you're going to forget what on earth you were doing. So if you already have it set up, it's like, oh, okay. This is going to be C over sine of, you know what? I'm just going to write capital C. Or you could write 49.787, you know, whatever. Do I hit second for this one? No, okay, go ahead and type it. I'm trying to have, have you guys try and get it without me saying anything. I need to stop talking you through it because you got to be able to do it on your own. But be aware, these are 11 and 12, so you should get a number that's in the vicinity. Like if you get 52 or something, yeah, like that, that's not right. You're going to type 11.4 sine alpha c divided by 50 sine 58 did you get 10 point two six five. yep good oh, that's what i got did you get that it's 11.4 sine alpha c close parenthesis divided by sine 58 Now I'm going to pause the recording to say you're not going to do any more written work. Set the pencil aside, okay? The rest of this happens within the calculator. Do you remember me with my triangle up here and I folded it for you? you remember that? And we said a straight line is worth how many degrees? You're going to do 180 minus alpha B. That gives you the new alpha B. Oh, whoops. 180 minus alpha B. Do you get 107.787? 
All right, store that as the new V, store alpha B, enter. Every time you store, you just cover up what you had before. So store alpha B, enter, then you can clear that out. How do you get the last angle? 180 minus alpha B. 58 and then minus alpha B. This one should be really, really tiny. Do you remember me trying to draw the triangle and it was a really thin slice? Like this one should be really small. And then what I always bring up is, do you notice anything about these decimals? Do you see how they match? That's gonna happen, all right? Store that as C, store alpha C, enter, store alpha C, enter, and clear that out. And then what you're gonna do is type this again, except when you use the new C value, it will give you the new answer. And it should be really tiny, because again, it's across from a tiny little angle. So it is 11.4 sine of C divided by sine 58. And again, it should be really small. Wow, oh my gosh, you are good with that calculator. Um, what happens after the middle? All right, so for this last one, side side angle. What does that mean? We're going to start by writing. Yep, theta is, and in this case, it's acute. Oh, I was like, what is she? Doing? All right, and then compare. Opposite is what? 18. So opposite is less than adjacent. What does that mean? Kind of, yeah. Find the height. So again, I'll highlight it. You want to try to just look at this right triangle. But it will always be sine. Good. So sine 76 equals height over 20. And you're going to type that in and get the height. Some of you do stuff in the calculator and are like allergic to writing it down. I can't grade what happened in the calculator. I can't grade what happened in your head. Do you see everything I wrote here? That's what you need to write, okay? It's not really that much. What are we getting for the height? All right, and then the whole point of getting that is to do a comparison. Your opposite is 18. Opposite is what compared to the height? Smaller, what does that mean? But that would still be worth a lot of points. It's a point for the picture and the pattern. I think I would make this worth at least two and then a point for saying no solutions. So that'd be worth at least four points and you didn't even do the problem.